Hey guys, Neil with Ready Gunner. Hey, today I'm gonna to talk to you about how to purchase a suppressor. It's kind of one of those topics that uh, there's a lot of confusion in. Nobody really understands the process. The ATF made changes about three years ago on how this whole thing works. And we made a video back then, but it's outdated. Things have changed and uh, this is the new updated video. So to make this as easy as possible, we've broken this down into three stages for you. So guys, so stage one is gonna be purchasing, finding the suppressor that best fits your needs. This is gonna be dictated by the type of gun you're putting it on, um, you know, how you wanna mount it, what the caliber is, what the pressures of that round are. So for example, uh, you can get a, a 30 cal suppressor and you're like, oh, well my, gun, my gun's a 30 cal. But if you're running a, like a 300 Remington Ultra Mag, the pressure rating on a lot of these suppressors will end at the uh, 300 Win Mag. So you gotta make sure it's, it's rated for the pressures of the gun you're shooting. So that's, that's really the first process and it's the funnest process is finding the suppressor that you want. Step two is gonna be the paperwork. This is the not so much fun part, but we've um, tried to make it as easy as possible. Silencer Shop uh, has come out with a kiosk and a process that's made it way easier to get this paperwork complete and, and reduce errors and things like that so the ATF isn't kicking your paperwork back, which is everybody's worst nightmare, right? So if you guys can find a silent shop dealer near you uh, with a kiosk, that's probably gonna be your best bet as far as uh, use uh, or, or making it easy for you to get the process done. So first thing you wanna do is you're gonna have to pay the ATF their $200 tax stamp. So the ATF's gotta get their money and the tax stamp is specific to the suppressor. So if you're buying three suppressors, that's 200 bucks, 200 bucks, 200 bucks, or 600 bucks into that. It's not, hey, can I buy four at once and put them all under one tax stamp? It doesn't work that way. The tax stamp is specific to the serial number of that suppressor. Step two is gonna be deciding how you wanna file. Do you wanna file your paperwork as an individual? Do you wanna do it as a single shot trust? Do you wanna do it as a traditional trust, NFA trust? Or do you wanna do it as a corporation? So there's obviously differences in, in uh, the paperwork and how you do it and why you should do it one way or another. If you do it as an individual, that suppressor and that serial number is going to be assigned to you and assigned to you only. You can be the only person who picks that up from the store when the tax stamp comes in. You're going to be the only person that can shoot that suppressor. You can lend it to your buddies. Nobody else can shoot it or be in possession of that suppressor but yourself. If you do a single shot trust, now it's in a trust, but kind of same thing. So it's going to be just you on that trust. It's going to be that serial number and only you can use that suppressor. If you're doing a traditional NFA trust, now you can bring other people and you can assign other people into that trust. They're all gonna have to do their fingerprints and their photos, same as you. Um, and, but now if anybody's on that trust, they can use the suppressor, they can take it, they can shoot it. Uh, they're essentially an owner of that suppressor as well. And the other benefit is if, you know, worst case scenario and you, uh, you pass on um, from this life, then that suppressor will pass on to whoever the beneficiary in that trust is. And then a corporation, kind of the same thing as the trust. Um, guys, I'm not an attorney and I'm not gonna go into the specifics. I would suggest you guys talk to an attorney to kind of get the specific breakdown and details uh, of why you should do it under a corporation versus a traditional NFA trust and things of that sort. But hey, if you just want a suppressor and you wanna buy and you don't wanna mess with a ton of paperwork, you can do a single shot trust, it's really the easiest and then you can segregate every suppressor you get into a single shot trust and, and secure them that way. So the next part is gonna be coming into a, a store like, like ours, Ready Gunner. We have a kiosk here and you're gonna have to do your fingerprints. You're gonna set up a profile on silencershop.com, come into the kiosk. They're gonna give you a little scan code when you set up your account, scan it into the kiosk. It's gonna pull up your profile and then there's a fingerprint machine right on the kiosk. You're gonna run all your fingers through it and get all the fingerprints done. That takes about, for most people, an average of 10 minutes to get it all done. And then they're gonna send you an email once that's done that says, hey, thanks for completing your fingerprints. Use this app here to take a photo and you're gonna upload a photo to your silencershop.com account. You guys wanna make sure it's a back, a white backdrop and you guys aren't taking it in the park or even something like this with a logo. It's gotta be a white backdrop or the ATF's gonna reject it. And then they're also gonna send you a link. Well, I click this link here to pay your $200 tax stamp, plug in your credit card information, pay the $200 tax stamp, hit submit. Boom, you're done. Silencer shop, shop will take care of the rest for you. They will submit that paperwork, 
get some eyes on it. It'll go through the review process, make sure everything's good to go. Once you get the green light, they're gonna submit it to the ATF. And from there, all you gotta do is wait. Right now, guys, we're seeing wait times. It's all over the place. We've seen people get their, their tax stamps back in 60 days. I've seen them take 13 months, okay? I don't know how the ATF works. That's the most common question. Like, well, why does this one take this long? Why does this one take this long? Uh, I heard individuals, if you file it as an individual, it, it's quicker than if you file as a trust or vice versa. It's not true. Guys, we've seen them all over the place regardless of how you file. Why one comes back in 60 days and why one comes back in 10 months, I have no idea. I don't think anybody does. I don't, I don't think the ATF knows why. <laughs> But, but essentially, yeah, I, I've submitted, personally, we've done five suppressors that we sent to the ATF in one folder, and we shipped it off to the ATF, and although they went in the same manila envelope, those suppressors all came back at different times, you know. Uh, the first one came back, you know, let's say four months, and the other one came back four months after the first one, even though they were in the same packet. So, I don't know how it works, but essentially, yeah, you do have to wait. Um, if you guys, uh, make sure when you guys select your range of where you want your suppressor purchased, or if you're buying it online and you're gonna have a transfer, some things you wanna look into is what's the transfer fee that that gun shop or FFL is gonna charge me to transfer my suppressor there, okay? If you buy it from the gun shop, they shouldn't charge you a transfer fee. Uh, the second thing, like uh, program we have here, Ready Gunner, is if you buy the suppressor from us and you pay for it in full, then you guys can come here and you can shoot it in a range, you can put it on your gun and you can go test it out and have what we call conjugal visits with your suppressor while you wait for your uh, paperwork to clear. Obviously you can't take it home with you, you gotta check it back in after you're done shooting, but at least it allows you to come and shoot your suppressor, get your mounts and everything ready and, and just kinda get familiar with it. So guys, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Um, we'll answer them. Obviously this isn't an all-inclusive video, there's gonna be some questions you guys have. So let's answer them in the comments below if there's uh, any nuances that you guys want answered. So hope this helps you guys with the suppressor process. Once you own a suppressor, guys, there's no going back. They're awesome. I have a dozen of them. It's a good time to go out and be able to shoot for the most part with a suppressor and not have to put hearing protection on, depending on what suppressors you have. Some of them, you're still going to have to wear hearing protection. Uh, they're not all Hollywood quiet, as I call them, where in the movies you shoot and you just get that little pew, pew sound. So uh, they all have their decibel readings. You guys can look into that as well. There's a lot of research that takes place, but you just go to a gun store, they'll help you with the process. And like I said, if they have a kiosk, it's gonna help you guys exponentially get that process done so you don't have to do you know, um, ink fingerprints and, and do hard copy paperwork and things of like that, which can also cause more errors. So again, hope this helps. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have questions, let us know. Thanks guys.